Come, let us gather in the presence of the Lord, who is our refuge and strength. As we lift our hearts in worship, may we find renewed hope in His unchanging promises. This is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is leading the way as we get through this August. People have started to get cold in Pennsylvania and I am loving it. Now, I don't know if you're a fall person, but that is who I am. The leaves are about to start changing. That cold wind's coming and sweater weather, it's on its way. Amen. That's a big amen to that. <laughs> now, all you summer people are just going to have to deal with that. You're just going to have to deal with it. So, but anyway, let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from 2 Peter 1, 3. 2 Peter 1, 3, which reads... His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. And this is definitely true. And you know what else he has given us with his divine power? The ability to pray. He has given us the ability to communicate with him through prayer. The way Jesus showed us in his model prayer, we know it as the Lord's prayer. And however you can communicate. And better yet, we have a site that can help you communicate with the Lord. If you need somebody to pray with you or pray for you in certain things, we would love to come alongside you in prayer. Go to get-prayer.com, get-prayer.com. And we have different tools and resources on that site to help you on your prayer journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a matter of fact, let us pray today. Today we want to pray for your hope. Do you have hope today? Are you encouraged today? Let's pray about that. Jesus Christ, we come before you with hearts that long for the peace and assurance that only you can provide. In the world that often feels overwhelming and uncertain, we turn our eyes to you, our strength, our hope, our refuge. You are the source of all hope, and we thank you for the promises you have given us, promises that never fail, even in our darkest of moments. Lord, we ask you to fill us with your spirit, that our faith may be strengthened and our hope renewed. When we're weary, stressed out, alone, burdened by the challenges of life, Remind us that your power is made perfect in our weakness. Help us to lean not on our own understanding, but trust in your unfailing love and wisdom. As we face this unknown, grant us the courage to walk by faith, knowing that you hold our future in your hands always. May your peace which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let your hope be an anchor for our souls, firm and secure, even when the storms of life rage around us and we don't understand what's next, when we don't see the next step, help us lean to you. Father, we lift up those who are struggling today, those who are lost, anxious, or without hope. May they experience your comforting presence and find rest in the knowledge that you are with them. Surround them with your love, guide them with your light, and lead them to the hope that is found in you alone. We thank you for your constant care and for the promise that nothing can separate us from your love. And as we continue our journey, may we always hold fast to the hope you give, confident that you are working all things together for our good. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our topic today is standing firm when integrity falters. Standing firm when integrity falters. I recall a time when I was in seminary, me and my mother were out in the, the parking lot of my dorm, and I was talking about different things I was dealing with and struggling with. And she told me something I never forgot that her father, my grandfather, had told her. When others do wrong, you do right. And it's something that has stuck with me throughout the years as a young man and now more 
seasoned individual at 46, as they say. <laughs> but that's the topic today. Standing firm when integrity falters. And our text comes from Psalm 12. We'll be going through all of Psalm 12. And it might sound a little current to what's going on in today's world. Why is that? Because the Bible, God's word, it's always current. It's always relevant without the compromise. All right, Psalm 12 reads as follows. Help Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say, by our tongues we will prevail, our own lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? Because the poor are plundered and the needy groan, I will now arise, said the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked who freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you see what's going on. And I, like so many, work to reside in your calm presence, knowing that you're sovereign, knowing that whatever these people are doing down here, you've allowed it to occur for your reasons and for your will and for your way. And I trust in that, just as so many should trust in that. We find ourselves so worked up sometimes when we watch the TV and see what people are doing that live outside of your gates. As we glance out there so often, we say to ourselves, that's wild, I can't believe this is happening. But we wait on you, knowing that there's nothing we can do about this. Only you can deal with this. And the most that we can do is be obedient to what you need us to do, if there's anything you need us to do. So Lord, now help us dive into your word. Say what needs to be said, Father. Do what needs to be done for the uplifting of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Psalm 12 is very relevant to uh, what's going on out here right now when you think about it. When you look on the internet and read those articles and see what people are doing in social media, just any old thing it seems like, <laughs> Psalm 12 comes very relevant. It captures David's deep cry to the Lord as he witnesses the unraveling of moral integrity in his society. This isn't just an ancient problem. It's a reality we face today where truth and righteousness often seem like they're on the brink of extinction. But God's word reminds us that even in the midst of widespread corruption and deceit, there is a way to stand firm. Do you understand that today? There is a way for you to stand firm. The same God who empowered David to remain steadfast is ready to equip us with strength and wisdom, we need to uphold integrity in a world that's losing its grip on what's right. Haven't we seen that already? There are so many things we've seen in the media that now they're calling correct when we know from a biblical standpoint is incorrect. And we also know just by being taxpaying citizens, this stuff is crazy and is wrong. So here's the thing. You don't have to be a believer out here to know there are certain things going on that just ain't right. Someone just has to call it like it is. Standing firm in your integrity isn't just about surviving in the corrupt world. It's about thriving as a beacon of God's truth and righteousness. That's something we all strive to do out here. It's about being the person who, when everything else around you is crumbling, remains rooted in the unshakable foundation of God's word. So today we're gonna to dive into scripture and uncover the practical steps that will help you 
help me not only maintain our integrity, but also influence the world around us for God's glory. And so that maybe someone who's watching or listening will come to the understanding they are a sinner that needs saving and that they can only be saved by Jesus Christ. Here's step one. Face the facts. Name the crisis boldly. You got to name it. We see in verse one of Psalm 12, help Lord for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. David doesn't sugarcoat this situation. He directly addresses the crisis of disappearing faithfulness and loyalty. Stand firm. We must first confront the reality of our circumstances. And this is where usually the mistakes begin in our society because we won't confront the truth. We see it. We all see it, but no one wants to state the actual problem because they are afraid of hurting someone's feelings. And as a result, conviction on whatever sinful nature is, is in the midst of the issue can never be addressed because we, we have gone into a season where we are preaching from various churches throughout the world that everybody goes to heaven. God is, God is one that yeah, you don't have to do no changing. Just come. I, I don't need you to repent. Just come. This is a lie. This is a bold faced lie. You do have to do some changing. You know it. I know it. Your neighbors know it. And the church you're trying to go to, they know it too. Okay. Otherwise you become a virus. The things that you're doing spreads throughout your community and it reduplicates itself in other people causing more damage than hope because no one wants to tell you the truth and hurt your feelings. Believers, I really hope you're not part of this crowd, this feel good crowd. This, yes, there is in the body, we're going to feel good because we know we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, we also understand that repentance is needed for transformation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Repentance is needed. See, we're, we're all hyped up. And I say this all the time. I know we're all hyped up about revival in this country especially in the United States. We're very, you know, just, we need revival. We, no, 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 you don't. You need repentance. Some of y'all need to change out there. Y'all so worried about being hyped up and being on fire for God that during this whole process, you ain't changing. You just feeling something. And what you're feeling is really not anything spiritual. You are just trying to feel good because you know you're living in filth. You know you're doing wrong. You're saying wrong things and and you're and you're causing a problem but no one will come and tell you hey do you realize you're you're doing this do you, don't you think you need to change and and get out of this way don't you think you're setting the poor example because again we don't want to hurt people's feelings well they're not bothering nobody and well you know i don't want to impede you better impede before someone else does and you lose your opportunity of discipleship Face the facts, name the crisis boldly. Because when you face the facts, you're, you're not surrendering to despair, but rather positioning yourself to seek God's strength and wisdom. Acknowledging the crisis is a form of spiritual preparation where you can align yourself with God's perspective and open your heart to his guidance. It's about being vigilant and proactive. Understanding that standing firm requires first recognizing the battle you are in, or better yet, also helping someone else recognize the battle they are in, especially if they've come to you for advice. Then there's step two, watch your back, guard against deception. Verse two says, everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. David highlights how deceit has 
infiltrated everyday interactions with people speaking lies and offering false flattery. Stand firm, you must be on guard against the deceptions that are all around you. This requires spiritual discernment, knowing that not everything that sounds good is aligned with God's truth. There are many people out there in pulpits around the world that are saying a lot, but they're saying nothing. It, it, it is a motivational word salad. It sounds holy. It sounds like biblically this could make sense. Well, in all, in all reality, you're not getting anything out of this. And a lot of times you, you cannot understand that immediately because you're, you're all hyped up in your emotions. But when you slow down, when you do this, when you slow down, you can actually, I mean, when you hear the words, you realize that there is no Bible in this. There's no Bible in this. Where is the scripture? How does this get me to the cross of Christ to be saved? It does not, people. It does not. What it does, it gets you hyped up and motivated about yourself to make you feel good. This is what they want. This is what they desire. And as long as they do that, they know you're gonna keep coming back. Why? Because you gotta keep, keep getting fed. You need that dopamine hit. You need that self-confidence hit. And so you keep going back and you keep going back. Why? Because now they got you addicted to the drug of this uh, validating experience they're providing for you. And you have, for, for drug uh, users who, are, who have come from doing drugs, you have exchanged one drug for another drug. Al alcoholics, you've gone from feeling one way with the alcohol to feeling something different with this motivational speaking, because it's not preaching. Guarding against deception means being rooted in the word of God so deeply that you can discern the truth from the falsehood. It's about having a heart that is sensitive to the Holy Spirit, allowing him to guide you through the noise of deceitful voices. Even on social media, you can be deceived. I was deceived, I'm not gonna lie. Years ago, uh, I thought that there were people on my network that were supporting me, that were out to help me out and you know get this ministry off the ground and then we're working we're working on you know refining the process and what we're going to do and everything and lo and behold these folks didn't really do anything they just existed on my network watching what i'm doing but not really helping in any way so i removed 600 of them all 600 because i realized we're, we're not really friends and you're on here because you knew me from back in the day, but we're not really talking and you're not doing life with me. You are not interacting. So why are you here? <laughs> That's what you get to. You get to, are you like going back and telling my folks back home what I'm doing online? Or, you know, maybe you're, you're just being nosy. You, you, you really got to dive into this because that can be deceiving people who friend you online and you're thinking oh here's our chance to finally be friends no they don't even say nothing to you they just want to be connected to see what you're doing and that's kind of sad and it was sad for me because i thought well here's a chance for me to re-network with people that i didn't network with in high school and i and i thought well here's a chance to connect with these people and and actually finally be that friend i wanted to be with them in high school and be that guy and nope <laughs> that did not work out at all and I was a better man for it because me and my wife went through it for six months, analyzing every person, going through, keeping and removing. You gotta be discerning. Integrity isn't just about what you do openly, but it's also what you allow into your heart and mind. And at that moment in time, we realize, now this is not what we want in our heart and mind. Protect your integrity by filtering out the lies and holding fast to what is true, noble, and right. And then, step three, let God fight. Trust in divine justice. Verse three through four say this, May the Lord silence all flattering lips and all every boastful tongue, those who say, By our tongues we will prevail, our lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? David doesn't just lament the deceit. He calls on God to act against it.
And many of us do not do this enough. We're gonna get emotional. We're gonna take care of it. We're gonna reply to every post that's said against us. We're not letting God deal with this. <laughs> You know, remember the prophets always reminded us in through the, what they was communicating with God that, you know, okay, this is not against me. This is against you, Lord. <laughs> Even God tells Samuel, they have, they haven't rejected you. They rejected me. And we got to remember that at times. Standing firm when integrity falters means recognizing that some battles are not yours to fight. It's about trusting in God's justice and understanding that he sees every lie, boastful claim, and every act of deceit. Letting God fight for you means releasing your need to control the situation. It's about stepping back and allowing God's perfect justice to prevail. This requires faith, a faith that in God's timing that is perfect, faith that he will defend the cause of the righteous, and faith that no evil word or action escapes his notice. Standing firm means trusting that God will vindicate you even when it seems like the wicked are winning. Either you're going to believe that God is sovereign or not, because if you believe God is sovereign, you have hope. If they say in something about you, God is sovereign. He saw it too, and I have hope. When they've done things against you, God is sovereign. He's controlling everything, and I have hope. You've got to maintain those two things on a daily basis. Otherwise, you'll get worked up, you'll try to solve it yourself, and you will make mistakes. And then there's step four, holding tight to the promises, relying on God's word. Because the poor, verses, uh, verse five says, are plundered and the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. God's response to the cries of the oppressed is a promise of protection and action. When integrity falters around you, standing firm means clinging to the promises of God with all your might. His word is not just comforting, it's a powerful declaration of his intentions and character. Holding tight to God's promises means living as if those promises are already fulfilled. It means letting his word guide your decisions, your reactions, your thoughts. It's about finding strength in the assurance that God will arise on your behalf in times of moral decay, like we are in right now. We all see it. God's promises become your anchor, keeping you grounded when everything else is shaking. And I'm sure you can look around. We have the biggest mental health crisis in the world right here in the United States. People cannot simply adjust to being outside. Well, what is going on? When did it get this way? Why are so many of our young people mentally broken and it's taking so much for them to do life? Why is it that way? Because we lack the faith in something bigger than us. The world has misled our children, misled our young adults, misled society in believing it's all you, you've got to make it happen. There is no such thing as a hope in a higher power. And as a result, it's on you. If you don't do it, it will never happen. Yet, half of them are out there worshiping the devil openly. Half of them are out there praying the demons openly. They're, they're aligning themselves to, to, to that supernatural power. But yet when we lean to Jesus, there's a problem. Why is that? Because of spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. Let us make them believe their God doesn't exist so that we can utilize the power of our God openly and they'll never see it coming. Be careful. You are being deceived. You do not realize this because no one tells you this. You have been deceived. You better lean on the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ right now, fall on your knees and ask for the Lord to come into your life, submit and surrender. Don't just accept Christ, submit to Christ, surrender to Christ and better yet work the gospel. Tell the good news. Let folks know if, if you do not surrender to Christ and come into relationship with him, you're going to hell. But there's time though, there is time. As long as you get up, as long as you're breathing, you have time to turn back, regardless of what you went through. That, that's irrelevant. Which leads us to step five, trust the process. Verse six says, the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. God's words are described as flawless and pure. 
This refining process is not instant. It is thorough and deliberate. Standing firm means allowing God's word to refine you, to purify your motives, and to shape your character in the midst of a corrupt world. Trusting the process involves submitting to God's discipline, letting his word expose areas in your life that need refining. Because let's face it, we all have those areas. It's about embracing the purification process, knowing that it's making you more like Christ and making you better, making you feel better, walking more upright, having the confidence, having the desire to do the kingdom work, having a desire to help others, inspiring you to find a church, get around a good membership, and worship the Lord together as a corporate body. The world may be full of impurities, but when you cling to God's word, you are continu continually being purified, made may, may more resilient, I'll get it out here soon, and equipping to stand firm in the face of moral challenges. And then when we do this, we get to step six, the final step, stay under the covering of Jesus Christ. Stay under the terms and conditions of the Father. Don't get all the way to Christ. You get right up beside him and you can feel the quietness. You can feel the peace. You can feel the serenity. You can feel his love. You can feel his protection. And then for whatever reason, you get a distraction. Squirrel and you fall out of those terms and conditions, guess what you gotta do? You gotta work to get back there. You gotta work to get back there. 12, uh, Psalm 12, seven through eight reads, you Lord will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever and from the wicked who freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race. Here's the thing, as long as we're here, we gotta live around this foolishness. As long as we're here, we're gonna deal with seeing it. We gotta live around it. We got to we got to engage it sooner or later in the workplace, maybe out in the community, and sometimes even at church. You got some people that is bringing in the church with them. But there's a declaration here of God's protection. The stand firm when integrity falters. You must remain under the protective covering of God, which means actively seeking his presence, depending on him for safety and trusting that he will guard you against the forces that are trying to undermine your integrity. Comments like, well, I know what the Bible says, but what do you think? There is a divine separation there. They're trying to get you on. People who only give half scriptures where they say, well, the Bible says don't judge. You ask them, okay, what else does it say in that, in that area of scripture? Recite the rest of it. When they say, well, we're supposed to be good neighbors, you say, okay, well, that's that's the second. What's the first and greatest commandment? To love the Lord thy God. See, they don't, they don't tell you that part. They just want you to do all the earthly functionalities. They don't want you to connect to the spiritual connection of Jesus Christ. They want you to do what they want you to do. Be a good neighbor, as in, you know, throw this little Christian dog whistle to shut you up. But when you also say, but it is also written to love the Lord thy God, they don't got nothing to say with that. Staying under his covering involves a posture of humility and dependence. It's about recognizing that your strength comes from God alone and his protection is your shield against rampant wickedness in this world. When, when what is vile is honored and what is good is mocked, your refuge is the Lord. That's it. There's nothing left. Standing firm means staying close to him, knowing that his protection is constant and never changes. Here's the deal, and then we're done. Standing firm when integrity falters is not about going with the flow of dealing with the pressures of the world. It's about taking deliberate steps to maintain your integrity anchored in the truth of God's word. In a world that often honors what is vile, you can reflect the unwavering integrity of God. It's not going to change. It's firm as a beacon of truth and righteousness, just blinking in the night, giving all of us out here in these seas of life direction. And maybe you need that direction. So I want you to contact us at our website, given early in the show, get-prayer.com. Submit your prayer request. Uh, we try to keep it updated as much as possible and be blessed, be thankful. It's going to be okay. God is still here. You take care. We'll see you next week. God willing. Amen.